Hello everyone, welcome you all once again. Here the 0 1 loss function is used for the binary class classification. Whenever we are training the model, we will use some of the loss functions. When we are applying the mean squared error or least square error or uh, square root mean squared error uh, for the classification functions, it will not give you better accuracy for the uh, classification problem statements because it is uh, better for uh, applying for the regression problem statements. So, so, we have to go for some of the classification loss functions. Uh, uh, here, 0 1 loss function is giving you uh, some uh, accuracy with respect to classification problem statements. Here, it will give you the error 1 whenever the data is misclassified and it will give you the 0 uh, whenever the both uh, predicted value and uh, actual value are same. So, if correct classification occurs, it is giving you 0. If there is any misclassification, then it is giving you 1. So, uh, here this 1 can be used to calculate the number of misclassification items. Suppose, if you are getting 3 times 1 means, you can use this uh, 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 once to count the number of misclassifications. You see, uh, we are calculating that some of this once will give you threes. That means the number of misclassification uh, uh, data are uh, three uh, samples. So, 0, 1 loss function is uh, an important metric for the quality of binary and multi classification algorithms, but it is very basic loss function. Assume the classification problem is having the data set uh, with with n number of samples x1 and its corresponding target output y1, x2 and tar target output y2 like that. Here x is representing the features and y is representing the labels. For given hypothesis function h of x, the loss function can be calculated uh, with respect to predicted output h of xn and uh, target output y of n. It, this value will be uh, real numbers. So, here it is uh, taking the uh, value of predicted value and the target output true label value. And also, if there is any uh, loss available, it will return a penalty. For find a hypothesis uh, such that it minimizes the empirical risk. So, to minimize the misclassification, we have to find out the hypothesis function uh, with respect to real number, real loss function. Uh, empirical uh, expected loss here represented with respect to predicted output uh, uh, with respect to hypothesis function and actual output, finding the loss between each and every samples. Here, we know the number of samples, finite number of samples here m. Uh, so, here we are calculating the sum of all the samples loss and taking average. Here, uh, the 0 1 loss function is uh, working for the binary class classification. Uh, here, the function is given the uh, difference between the predicted output and uh, actual output. If, if it is not matched, you will get 1. Right, predicted out, uh, actual output is not matching with predicted output. That means misclassification. If it is misclassification, you will get one. If it is correct classification, you will get zero. So in general, the loss function uh, we use cannot be optimized efficiently since here we are getting only the quantity that is scalar value. We cannot optimize this. So uh, here uh, we we have to go for another loss function that will reduce the cost by using optimization method. So, when you are se selecting the op uh, alternative loss function, then that loss function is called surrogate loss function. So, why you are going for surrogate loss function? Because the 0 1 loss function is a discontinue and uh, the value is discontinue discrete value and also we cannot differentiate that um, discrete value. So, we have to go for alternative loss function. It is called surrogate loss function. So, here the 0 1 loss function leads to estimate only the mode. Mode in the sense count the number of misclassified samples. Suppose uh, as I told you if you are having 3 number of misclassification it is giving you the total number of count. I mean total number of misclassified samples of the target values. Like that we can use uh, L1 loss function uh, L1 regularization function for median L2 loss function for mean. So here the L1 is using the number of misclassification total number of misclassifications we are calculating uh, 
and taking the average here so uh, here the representation is given whenever we are getting the uh, correct classification the last will be zero whenever we are getting the misclassification last will be one it is represented in the graph so it is not convex so convex in the sense our curve will be like this to calculate the to optimize the given uh, function but it is non convex function so it is non smooth and the small changes in the uh, parameters leads to change uh, huge loss okay so when you are using the y dash y dash equal to w transpose x plus b so when you are changing the w value and b value it is impacting on the predicted output so it will give you a huge loss the loss will increase drastically even small changes applying in the model so this is the drastical change here the limitation of the zero one loss function is not differentiable and non continuous therefore if it is not differentiable we cannot use the gradient descent optimization approach so that's why we have to go for surrogate loss function alternative loss functions like uh, cross entropies here one more issue is if the data is not linear nearly separable we cannot use zero one loss function the why do we need surrogate loss function for the classification problem statement the uh, zero one loss function is unable to uh, differentiate so if it is unable to differentiate then we cannot uh, calculate the gradients for the function if uh, gradients are uh, uh, not able to calculate then we cannot um, uh, apply the gradient descent optimization methods so the surrogate loss function uh, will provide good result by using the uh patterns which are learned from the given uh, data set and the classifier will achieves um, minimum risk minimum error by giving highest accuracy and uh, decreasing loss okay uh, the loss function can be applied for classification actually should be optimized so how can we optimized so by applying the differentiation we can optimize that so uh, when you are uh, applying the differentiation you will get the convex curve with the smoothen uh, state okay so the example is given here exactly minimizing the expected zero one loss is typically intractable that means uh, it is inflexible uh, to the uh, Uh, optimization method even when we are using the linear classifier so approximating the zero one loss with given uh, with uh, convex function is called surrogate loss so to get the convex uh, curve we are going to uh, apply some small modifications so that is called surrogate loss function so here the surrogate loss functions for the classification problem statements are one is hinge loss which is uh, useful for the svm uh, for classifying the uh, given data set so here the hinge loss is past giving positive value whenever the correct classification is occurs uh, if misclassification is occurs then loss will be huge the hinge loss uh, function is given here maximum of 0 comma 1 minus act, uh, uh, actual output into target output so the surrogate loss function svm uh, i mean uh, hinge hinge loss will be useful for svm classification uh, here another one uh, another one surrogate uh, uh, loss function is log loss so this is having two log loss functions one is binary cross entropy and categorical cross entropy binary cross entropy can be used for used for uh, binary class classification categorical cross entropy can be used for multi class classification so instead of zero one loss function we can go for some advanced alternate loss functions like hinge loss and binary class class binary cross entropy categorical cross entropy as a surrogate loss functions for zero one loss function for the uh, classification problem statements thanks for watching